Aglo everybody, right, welcome to today's episode, and today's episode, everything is evil, Pokemon, Digimon, uh, Magic the Gathering, Teletubbies, uh, Spawn, uh, Figurines, uh, Furby, did I say that? Yep, he said that twice now, and basically everything that you buy in a toy shop is evil, uh, game shop is evil, um, just ban, might as well just ban them all, you know, just close down Toy World, you know, farmers shut down the toy department, you know, they sell games in these places too, and they're all evil, what a depressing life this guy has, man, well, it's not depressing, because he scams people out of money for a living, so he's actually draining people's wallets, by lying to them. Anyway, so let's go and have a look at uh, the crazy lunatic world of Sir Stephen Tollips. I've got to show this off. You knew I had to. Two dollar Pokeball with a two dollar Pikachu. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, gotta catch him all. I'm actually impressed with the quality. For two bucks I'm going to get a piece of round tennis ball size bit of wood if that's possible and just paint it red with the black line and the white on the bottom um, I mean yeah it's it's a bit cheap obviously but you know if you leave it on the shelf locked like that sitting there it's Pretty cool. If you don't behave, Pikachu, you go back in the ball. No, leave my mouth alone. The hell is that? It's a knot. <gasps> anyway, back to fantasy. Sorry. Shrink me. We're on an island with them. There's these Digimonsters. That's what. It Might as well research Digimon while I'm here. I've got three monitors. Uh, now, so it's confusing where to put the mouse. So, Digimon branded digital monsters, virtual pet toys. Oh, yeah, I want a virtual cat trading game. Yeah, very similar. 97 virtual pets. Oh, yeah, Tamagotchi. Yeah, all right, feed him. Conception. Oh, yeah, yeah. My niece had one of those. Virtual pet. So, well, hang on. Do they, f they don't fight. Do they fight like Pokemon? Or is he just completely... Oh, it's a role-playing game. Rosemon, War Greymon, and Skull Greymon. I might look into the game. Thanks, Steve. Oh, it's a multi... Massive multi-on-player RPG. Ah, uh, yeah. I might look into it. A few fighting games, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360... And Digimon All Star Rumble. Oh, don't know much about it, but I certainly know more than he does. Carry on, Steve. Tell us about these Pokemon Digimon things. These are kids that are on an island, and these monsters, he's called a Digivice. These are kids that are on an island, and these monsters, these Digimonsters, that's what it stands for, digital monsters, are on an island with them. And these Digimonsters, at times, attack the children. How can any of that be true? I, I don't know. What's the TV series? Hang on, I've got to go back to the menu. Just anime, television series. Bandai, yeah! The Bandai Pippin! Anyone play an Apple game? 1999 anime series, greenlit, Digimon films, aired theatres, Digimon Adventure, short film. 
We have the children's television series. Don't know much about it, but I don't believe a word he's saying about it anyway. Have to investigate later on. Not don't really care about anything he's got to say outside of. <sighs> What's he been attacking? I don't know. Resident Evil 2. I've lost the plot. He's just got the wacko world. First there's Wally's world, now there's wacko world. <laughs> Carry on, Stephen. And what to fight them off, they use a Digivice. Mm -hmm. So if you start talking like that, pretty soon your mouth's going to get all tangled up. Digivice, Digimon. Things like that. So it's like you look at those things and there's nothing absolutely, absolutely nothing different in the, in the premise of this than there is Pokemon. Absolutely nothing different except the fact that they're virtual pet toys, trading games, digital world, parallel universe, virtual pets, Tamagotchi or Nano Giga pet toys. Video game series, Digimon, here we go, Bandai Namco, please, sorry, take two, Digimon World for the PlayStation, so I'll look into that, but I have no idea what he's talking about. Digimon has experienced a rivalry with the Pokemon series, however, it has maintained a dedicated fan base. Well, good on it. The fact that it exists is cool. Who needs more Ninja Turtles? I do. <laughs> Go, Steve. Ruin my day. The same company doesn't put it out, but you know what? They jumped on it. Pokemon was so popular, now we'll come out with Digimon. Really? I didn't think companies wanted to make money. But again, it's an oriental idea. Therefore, it's evil. Right, racism and shoes. Tell you how. For years. Yes. For hundreds of thousands hundreds. of years. Since time began. Really? One of man's biggest beliefs was that he could bring out the animal nature in himself. Oh. Even to the point of actually, maybe, finding a way to become an animal. I think he's going to show what I think he's going to show. Well, praise oh. God, someone found a way to do that. And it comes actually from an occult practice called lycanthropy. And that's where yeah. you get the werewolf. So Bill Snivlin lived as a werewolf for three and a half years. He lived off human blood. What does Wikipedia have to say about all that nonsense? I can't throw P, I can't spell. That's what the internet's for. A form of madness involving the delusion of being an animal, usually a wolf, with correspondingly altered behavior, or an animagus. Now, in this guy's delusional world, and Bill Snivellin's delusional world, and Gal Ruplinger's delusional world. The characters in Blade Runner, and it's just out of my reach, <laughs> Blade Runner, the characters of Blade really exist in real life. Van Helsing really is a real vampire hunter. And you can, before you do your, join the Illuminati... You have to be a 90th degree Freemason in the Rosicrucian order and then become a vampire to make it deeper into the occult. This is the weirdest Christian conspiracy in existence. This guy, well, he believes they're real. Therefore, he's the expert. Therefore, they must be real. I'm still... Waiting for the bloody toy to be shown to the screen. Just wait. Found a way to do that. And it comes actually from an occult practice called lycanthropy. So once you get into the high priest of Satan, to go deeper into Satanism, you become a werewolf or a vampire. 
and all the werewolves live in the temple in Utah, the Mormon temple. Thanks, Bill. And that's where you get the werewolf, being able to transform from a human into animal form and then back to human. Yeah, but Steve, the, it's not real. I wish you'd accept the fact that these aren't real things. Well, now your teenage crowd has their heroes, and they're called Animorphs. Animorphs, yeah. yeah. Look so at that, it's boxed. Oh my god, how much? It would be so expensive they are. Never mind. You probably burnt them after the show anyway. If I can get a little... There we go. Animorph. Do you remember, do you remember like, what those 95 days when you could transform your own face into a tiger? Yeah. And if you look at that, in this particular, this particular case, this is a teenager that can transform himself into a tiger. And it says on the back of the box, the invasion has begun. Okay, Steve, but I just want to point out that these are toys for children. They're not based on real things. And then it also says, we call ourselves Animorphs. We can't tell you who we are or where we live. It's too risky. Oh. But it tells you that there are aliens that have evaded the Earth and that the only hope for Earth's... So for your conspiracy theories to work, aliens would actually have, aliens would actually have to exist. Get around that one, Steve struggle against these things are these teenagers who can transform themselves into animals. And so now, wouldn't that be real appealing to a child who goes around growling all the time anyway and acting like he's a dog or a cat or, you know, whatever? That's called role-playing. It's called having fun. Like the, 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 the teens nowadays have an actual tail, like a furry tail that comes out the back of their jeans. This guy wouldn't be able to live with something like that. And now they go, man, wouldn't that be fun to be able to transform yourself into an animal? Wouldn't that be... Yeah, but the child understands there's a difference between fantasy and reality, unlike you. be fun to become Bowser for a day? And then back, Animorphs. Here's a cute one. If you can get a shot of that. That's a cute one right there. Oh, that would be worth so much bloody money. All right, get over it. Changes from Inferno creature to, I can't read that word. I don't, don't know. Wow. Okay. Don't try and buy one to be worth hundreds today that actually transforms itself from a good anamorph to an evil anamorph now I don't know again you know I, I look I look out in the audience and, and we, we have a lot of children and but we have a lot of uh, uh, probably oh I'd say probably in the 30s 40s uh, even 20s uh, audience also I don't know Going back even even to what you were playing with, but we had like G.I. Joe and, you know, we had planes and Superman and Batman. And I mean, our, our, our hero characters were more the heroes. I don't know what you call these things. Uh, they're definitely not heroes. And I never seen anything that they're now coming out making it look so ugly. Look at that. That thing looks like... <laughs> The trolls, are, the trolls are even uglier. What about the cabbage bags? I mean, the garbage pail kids. Yeah, they never lie. Like something we used to pray to outside the circle. Looks like a demon. Transformers, because there's more. Remember that I told you that demons can appear to you in any way, shape, or form that makes you the most feared. Okay, but again, demons aren't real, Steve. I'm <laughs> pointless. <laughs> Guess what little Billy or Bobby are going to dream about when they get through playing with that before they go to bed? That they won a battle? That they beat the enemy? Wouldn't that be wonderful? And I'm going to show you the most atrocious of all. 
Bobby. And I tell you something. <laughs> if you don't believe that your kids like these things, see the tape on this box? <laughs> Oh, I didn't know whether these things were going to survive the tour enough to get here for the video shoot. I really didn't. The, the reason that's torn like that is because there were kids up there trying to get to it. They were wanting to get it out of the box and play with it. Look at that. It's not from the movie. You get a shot of that? Look at that. And I mean, if you want to see it closer, I can, I'll show it to you closer later on. But you need to see this thing. Th these things are designed for your ages five and up. Five and up. And if you look down here on the bottom here, you'll see what looks to be an onk, and it's a satanic onk. Because now you have the cross, and the loop is not a loop, the loop is a skull. And on the skull, it actually, in the, in the forehead, has another satanic symbol. And you look on here, and I'm going to read to you what it says here on the back. Wait a minute. I'm nooting out, I'm nooting out. Noodle it, noodle it, noodle it. Commando Spawn, 53 bucks. Creep Show. Oh, oh my God. Life is so much better now. 7 inch Spawn, 84 bucks. Oh my God. Pathfinder. Unpainted. Wow. Look at that. Wow. Spawn.com. I hate the movie, but he's cool. I hate the movie, but he's cool. Yeah. No, there's just, you can't, don't even think about buying these things. You're just, nah. Anyway, back to fantasy. What have you got to say about this cult? Figurines. I was going to call them toys, but he says toys are what kids play with. Yeah. Hopefully this thing stays together. This is called Tormentor. And it says, a strange brute, a savage brute with no soul, he lives to inflict torment, pain, and terror on others. His pleasure comes from the pain of others. He's a master of torture and the many instruments used to amplify pain and suffering. One of his most cruel acts was grafting the head and body parts of his victims. Sorry, another nerd moment. I have to interrupt. I'm just curious how much it would be worth today. 25 bucks? Okay. There he is in all his glory. Oh. Okay. Well, this is a crap movie, so it wouldn't be as valuable as the bloody Yu-Gi-Oh from back in the day. In box, as they call them in the trade. Back to you, Steve. What other bullshit you got for us? To his own body, as to be able to make his their pain everlasting. Cool. And this is a toy for thirty for for five and up. A toy. It's fact check time. Would it be a for a five year old? <laughs> God, seriously, what does Amazon have to say? Oh my God, there's so much cool stuff. 14 months and up. Ah, would you want to give this to a 40 month year old baby? Yeah, I don't think so. There's something called common sense. You give it to a two-year-old, they would chew its head off. And just think about how much they want to enter Satanism because they played with a toy. <laughs> uh, you're funny, Steve. You see that they have found a way to make evil look cute. Cute. And get it into the homes of even cute. our Christian kids. Cute. And I tell you, I mean, even if, you're, even if your kids don't bring this stuff home, I guarantee you they know somebody that's got it. Even if they don't have Pokemon, I can guarantee you that they Pokemon. know many other kids that do. I forgot, Pokemon is an alternate universe to Pokemon, where, where Pikachu's the bad guy. 
Pika pika. <laughs> and if they're not playing these video games, I'll bet you they go over to the house of people that are, kids <gasps> that are. But what if they've got a Genesis <gasps> or a SNES? <gasps> what if they've got a CDI? Oh my God. And you have to wonder what kind of influence it's having on them when they come back into our homes. And I'm going to tell you something else. You are? You, you need to be aware of what they might bring in the door with them okay. when they come back to your home. Uh-huh. Because spirits can transfer. And if these things are actually, remember we said that one thing that these things do is they attract demons like a magnet? Oh. And guess what your child has with him that. dragging in when he opens up the door? after he's been subject to this thing, to these toys, to these videos. So, so, so after an hour of playing Digimon, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, oh, crap. Ma Ma Magic the Gathering. The child needs to have a shower when they come home to wash the demons. I, I think showers should have a built-in exorcism um, function. So when the child comes home from playing Yu-Gi-Oh, then they can have the shower to exercise the demons from playing with Nintendo. Genesis does what Nintendo don't. Comes with free demons. Games to these books. Guess what he's bringing in the front door with him when he comes back in your home? Oh, God. Not a Harry demons. Potter book. And those things are now in your home. Oh, no. Another toy is one of the, the ones that we look at that are kind of innocent looking. And everybody goes, oh, oh, no, not Furby. Furby. Not Furby. Not innocent, cute little Furby. Yep. It's demolished. Let me tell you a story. Evil. It's a true story. Oh, this, this is regurgitated from Pat Robinson, what you're about to hear, or Kenneth Copeland, one or the other. can't remember. It happened to me because I happened to... He says it happens to him, right? But the original person that spread this crap story is either Kenneth Copeland or the other guy I mentioned. Anyway, Pat Robinson. I think it happened to his youth pastor. I can't know. Don't know. Anyway. Yep. Let me tell you a story. It's a true story. No, that happened not. to me because I happened to be... <laughs> If you're going to stop lying, Steve, you might want to start stop lying now. Like, this never happened to you. You've stolen this story from someone else. Like most of your stories. A big part of it. I went to the Prophecy Club one morning to, uh, to talk to my wife. My wife, by the way. My beautiful, adoring, sweet, loving wife. See, I, I had to t say that on tape. I can't tell you why I had to say that, but I did. And... <laughs> And I, I went to see her and talked to her. She's the business office manager for the Prophecy Club. And I went to talk to her about some... So that's why he's allowed to preach his garbage, because his wife's a member. Ah, point taken, Steve, point taken. Something, and I went to the door, and one of the girls met me and she, right at the door, and she said, you've got to go upstairs. And I said, I mean, and she was just real, you know, adamant about it. You've got to get upstairs. And I said, What? And she goes, there's a Furby up there. Oh, oh no. Oh, God forbid. You know, I'm Furby. Hell, you know, I said, what what? She goes, oh, you got to go up there and talk to Joanne. Oh, so you got to go up there and see what happened. Oh, uh, Went up there, and, and my wife was sitting there at the, the computer and typing wrong. in orders and things. Because and I looked at her, and I said, what in the world is going on? I noticed there was one of the Furbies were sitting right there on, on, her, dre on her desk. Ah. And she said that there's a, there's a couple there that work there. Uh, they're getting ready to get married. And young couple, and he had given her a Furby for her birthday. Oh. Now, she began to tell me a story about this Furby. She had put this Furby on her dresser, and one time at night, the Furby actually started speaking and waking her up. And it said, me want you. Now, you need to understand that this is the only toy created that actually has its own language. Uh -huh. And they tell us that there is a almost human computer chip and by the way there is a computer yeah. chip right now getting ready to be released called the angel chip uh -huh. that is supposed to be able to even be implanted into human bodies because it actually 
can take the place of an organ's functions? A computer chip. You'll, hear, you'll, you'll be hearing more about that later. But they have a computer chip inside of them that allows them. Sorry to be fact-checking Stephen Tollins. Digital Angel Chip now FDA approved for medical use. Gizmo. The US-based Digital Angel has produced the Vera Chip. Oh, okay, an implantable computer chip which monitors human biometric can't read functions and transmits the data of GPS technology. So to all the conspiracy theorists, this is the mark of the beast. This is the actual mark of the beast. And if you accept this in your right hand or forehead, you will go to hell forever and ever. There's no way of repenting of accepting this. Mm. Okay, Steve. You've got something... You named something correctly? Give them that, yeah. Carry on. To develop language. And you're also told that these Furbies not only have their own language, but they can learn your language. Ah. And the more you talk to them, the more they pick up words from you. Pick up, pick up. <laughs> and they have language that they identify with each other and that this is the only toy on the market that can communicate with each other. Wow. You know what? They can do that miles away. I'm they have sure. tested it. The toy manufacturers have run a big test on it, and it works. Huh? And they hear each other miles away, and they can communicate back and forth with each other from miles away. Only toy on the market that can do that. So they shout at louder than a jet plane to hear the other? Now, going back to the story. <laughs> Young couple had been given the Furby. She got woke up in the middle of the night because the Furby was actually talking. Put the Furby down on the floor. Took the batteries out, and it still get talking. Chucky! Passed by it, and there's supposed to be a uh, computer analog right here. That's what this is here. That black design right in the middle of their forehead. Isn't that interesting? Okay. Right in the middle of their forehead, and this is supposed to be the sensor. And it, it detects movement and also detects sound, and that's what is supposed to trigger off the chip in order for this to be able to talk. And its eyes move up and down. Now, put it on the floor and didn't want it, didn't want it anymore, didn't want to talk to it anymore, and for days passed by it, and nothing happened. And then one time it was on, a, a, on the desk again, and said, me want your body. <gasps> then she said, no, I don't want this thing anymore. I gave it back to her boyfriend. Now, the boyfriend and the girlfriend had it in the car. We're on the way to the Prophecy Club to take it over there. A car came out of nowhere, broadsided them from the side, and, and didn't hurt them, praise God. But, you know. Sorry. Don't trust them. Furbish language. Furbish is the language spoken by all Furbies and friends of Furby. Furbish takes inspiration from many languages, especially German and Japanese. The original 98 Furby has a dictionary contained a total of 42 different Furbish words. Over the years of Furby models, many new words have been invented from moolah, money, to oka, 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 uncle. So I call bullshit on this story anyway blindsided the car so the car is enabled took it back to the prophecy club and left it there it was downstairs in the mail room and that's that's where the guys downstairs in the mail room at the prophecy club are busy filling out all everybody's orders and things and they had it sitting there and one of the mail guys got upset with it because turned around and said it felt like that something was watching it from behind watching oh, no. it from behind Jackie. Took it upstairs, and it ended up on my wife's desk. And she looked at me, and I'm going to tell you something. My wife is a born-again, spirit-filled, Bible-believing, God's uh, uh, word-reading Christian. I mean, she is on fire for the Lord. And she does not tell things if they're not true. Unlike you! <laughs> Your wife's married to an idiot. And she told me what happened. Artist. 
The Furby was sitting on her dre on her desk, and she took the batteries out of this Furby. Because yeah. Because the Furby started talking. Yeah. She didn't like what it said. It said, me no like you. Okay, so it's speaking Furbish, but your wife can translate Furbish into English. Okay, brilliant. Doctor, do nothing. Yeah, gotcha. And she said, well, I don't like you either, and started to take the batteries out of it. <laughs> so she took the batteries out of it, and it growled at her. So he just said on a stage representing Jesus Christ that they took the batteries out of a Furby and the Furby continued to function. Bloody hell, Steve. And she said, it growled. And I said, you mean it just made a growling noise? She said, no, it growled. I said, let me see that thing. And I picked that Furby up and I sat down in a chair. And for about five minutes, all I did was try to commune with God and try to and, and, and ask the Lord. I said, Lord, show me what's in this. Show me what's behind all this. Is this is this just a toy? And all of a sudden I said, and, and I, you know, it, you just have to take that spiritual authority over these things, you know. And I sat there and I said, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I said, I know who you are. I know what you are. I said, reveal yourself now. And Furby opened up its eyes and said, me no like you. And I said, well, I don't like you either. You're out of here. In the name of Jesus, leave. And the beak shut, the eyes shut. Now, it said this without any batteries in the toy. Again, James Randi. Uh, um, what's his face? The psychiatrist. Go on his show and prove before the audience, Dr. Phil, that's it. Prove before the audience that this is something that happened in real life. Okay, easy. No power. No electronic power. No ACDC, you know, power going to it. This thing spoke without power to it. So you're lying your ass off in the name. Yeah, I know. I'm pissed off. And spoke out. And when it said, me no like you, <laughs> I don't care. You're out of here. In the name of Jesus, you're out of here. So it left. The beak shut. The eye shut. Didn't talk again. Did it run out the window? Or did it jump out the basement? I gave it back to the young couple and I said, because that was given to you, you now must be the one to destroy that thing. I could Along with all their Harry Potter books, Magic the Gathering cards, all their Pokemon trading cards, Digimon. Mm. Destroy it for you, but you need to take authority and break that curse. And so they took it Damn out and they right. burned it. Now, she came to me, the young girl came to me at church about, I think it was about almost a week later, and she said that the Lord led her to a book on Celtic deities and gods, and that the Furby, have you ever noticed when you go out to buy a Furby, these things have already names assigned to them? Really? In other words, if you go out on the market right now and you go to look at a Furby, they already have a name given to them, uh, such as Tukala is one of them. Uh, hers was called Mimi, M-I-E-M-I-E. -E -M -I -E. And she said that Mimi really stuck in her head, and she and the Lord led her to this book Aww. on Celtic deities and gods from the library, and she looked it up and Mimi... Sorry, I have to butt in here. Look how cute they are. Oh, my gosh. Oh. This one's called... Voodoo Purple. Oh, no. It's taken a hold of me. Tiger Electronics, Hasbro. Oh my god. It's all demonic. It's, it's all demonic. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. What did she say? Moo Moo. Where are we? I'm sorry. Back to, back to fantasy. Amy was in there. And, she, and the Lord led her to this book on Celtic deities and gods from the library. And she looked it up and Mimi was in there. And it described what Mimi was. Mimi was a giant that sat under a tree whose branches reached to heaven and roots reached to hell. And that this giant ruled over a land of dwarfs that were evil and did mischievous things. And I started thinking, wow, I wonder if the other names have anything to do with it. 
So I started going out to the store, and I went to, to toy stores and looking for, for Furbies. And I was looking at the names of all of them and writing them down in a little book so that I could go back and try to, try to see some of them. And some of them just kind of hit something in my mind. And I thought, I've heard that name somewhere before. That name's real familiar. Where have I heard that before? And I went and I... I'm sorry, I just can't help fact-checking. This is Johnson and Celtic mythology, Welsh mythology, Cornish mythology. This Siri, Ben Diggard Fran, <laughs> I can't pronounce these. Gog Magog, I know that from a Pokemon. Uh, Tethra, Ifnui, Greek and myth. Greek and Rome. You're not going to find Mimi. Doesn't matter. Stop trying to fact check him. This is nothing to do with reality. Whatsoever. I looked up, I went into the, to the website that, that's, a, it's not a Christian website, but it's, it's another website that actually lists names of demons in hierarchy. In other words, it's a book of demons. I found ten of them in that, in that book of demons. Ten of those names, of those Furbies. Thirteen of them I went and found in a book on Celtic gods and deities. My opinion, and it's just my opinion, but I believe this is what the Lord has shown me, that these innocent, cute little things are vehicles for demonic entities. <laughs> you know, like if you have a car and you drive a Chevy and you go out tonight in the, in the parking lot, you don't look for a Dodge, you don't look for a Plymouth or something, you know, you, you look for that particular Chevrolet, right? Come on, people! The Book of Demons is out on the Switch. We're not burning enough Harry Potter books or Magic the Gathering cards. The occult is on full force. It's got blood and violence. Oh, we must stop the progress of these evil games. <laughs> Sarcastic bitch. That that because that's your car that's what's been assigned to you that's what you bought and that's what you drive and so therefore that's your vehicle same thing with these things these huh? demons have that name assigned to that toy so therefore that's their vehicle what better way to get in your homes than you bring those things in your home and the thing about it is when you start looking at those things what do they look like what do you, what, when you saw Furby, what did it remind you of? Satan. Okay, Ewoks. Gremlins. gremlins. And what happened to gremlins oh. when you poured water on them? They turned into what? Demons. Gremlins aren't real, Steve. Not evil other gremlins. The gremlins became demons. Oh. And so that's what these things have done and I started looking at that and I said man that almost looks like a takeoff of gizmo and now praise yeah copyright strike infringement mm. God they have a gizmo Furby out and on the box it's it's for $29.99 for $29.99 you can have gizmo in your home and it says Aww. that he can communicate with Furbies and baby Furbies Furby. And you wonder what they're saying to each other. Here is an experiment that they did. Now this this was taken off of a kind of it was the, the picture was kind of blurry, but I wanted to get it on. I hope you can kind of see that. The picture itself was blurry. It wasn't it's not it's not the overhead the itself. The but if you look at this now, there's a Furby. And this is a guinea pig. Really? A big guinea pig. I thought it was a leprechaun. <laughs> that was funny. Why? Okay. Now, what they did was they actually put this Furby in with the guinea pig to see how fast that would develop its language. Ah. 20 seconds. Wow. Is all it took for that Furby to be able to, to imitate to everything that that guinea pig did. <laughs> you ever seen a guinea pig or you ever had a guinea pig? What they do is they whistle and that's how they communicate. I speak This well. thing started whistling the same thing that that guinea pig did in 20 seconds. That's not normal oh for any toy.
to be able to do that. <laughs> okay, like enough on Furby. <laughs> Show you some of the ones that are out on the market. Here's one from the popular movie, and we talked a little bit about it the first session, in fact. Halloween. Remember the story of Michael Myers? This is Michael. Yeah, he became Austin Powers. Now you can go out and buy your hero slasher and take it home and play with it. Yeah. And wouldn't you want your nice five and six year old son or daughter to bring this through the door? Your and who the hell's... Oh. Well, now that we know that everything is evil in the whole entire world, we might as well dig ourselves a hole in the ground and live down there till we die. <laughs> Oh god, next episode is going to be something completely different. Uh, just back to the normal Harry Potter stuff for an episode. And then we'll see if there's anything more in this occult in your living room video left to not debunk, just take the piss out of. I mean, we're, we're taking the piss out of a scam artist, so it's not very. It's low-hanging fruit, as they say. Mm. Thanks for watching. Tune in next same time, same bat channel, same bat time. I got that wrong. Fight.